Howdy folks, and welcome to another Bluey reaction. After all the season and series finales I've been watching on the channel recently, it's gonna feel really good to record a somewhat normal video again to try to bridge me between the, the series that are ending and the series I'm about to go do. Uh, today we're going to be doing, once again, two new episodes and one revisit. Uh, I did not hear anything negative about this uh, this kind of format last time, so I'm going to stick with it for a while because I'm really enjoying throwing in the repeat episodes every now and again. Uh, but what we're going to be watching today, the two new episodes are Wild Girls and Stickbird. I don't know anything about Wild Girls, but Stickbird I've seen some posts here and there about, uh, some discussion here and there, so I'm excited for that one. It seems to be a pretty pretty popular, well-liked episode from this most recent batch. And the one episode that we're going to be revisiting today is ARMY. We had Cricket last time, a very Rusty-centric episode, and another one here with ARMY. Uh, I made a poll with four episodes. I did have, you know, once again, ARMY ran away with it, but at least the other three were a little bit closer than the first group. Eventually, I'm gonna have a competitive poll, people, I promise. But until then, uh, leave episodes you'd like to see me revisit in future ones of these below. And I guess just one more programming note, I know that the 28 minute episode, the 28 minute long episode of Bluey is coming in April, I believe. I believe it's releasing simultaneously worldwide. Us Americans finally don't have to wait to get one. And so I think the next video I do is gonna be just that episode, because I'm really, really excited what they're gonna do with a super long runtime, uh, more than four times the length of a normal Bluey episode. I'm really excited for that one. Uh, so tune back sometime in April for that, I suppose, uh, plug for the next one. Uh, but I'm really excited to watch these today. Uh, Army is an episode I like a whole heck of a lot. And like I said, I'm excited to watch the other two. So let's scooch over here into position as I, you know, thank you for being here watching this video. I appreciate it a whole heck of a lot. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that so you can see whenever I upload more Bluey stuff. Make sure you leave a like on the video and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about these episodes and, you know, uh, suggesting future episodes as well. Uh, I have a, a Patreon and channel memberships if you'd like to support the channel even further. It doesn't matter super a lot for the Bluey, uh, but I do have this reaction as well as I think maybe the last two Bluey ones I did uh, fully uncut over on Patreon. So if you want to see these without any of the editing, feel free to hop over there. Uh, and without further ado, let's get started with our first one today, Season 3, Episode 44 of Bluey, Wild Girls, starting up in 3, 2, one, go. Let's play Wild Girls, Indy. Okay, oh, it's the name the of a game. I'll be a pig. I was gonna say Winston's the wildest girl of them all, huh? Indy, can you play with me? Oh, um, she was just about to play Wild Girls with me. I wanted to play Calm Girls. Can we play something different? I'm a bit bored of Wild Girls. Like what? Dang, how can I'm one get bored tag. of Wild Girls? If you get tagged, you have to pretend you're a toilet. And you can only <laughs> move if someone flushes you. Bush. <laughs> like the video to flush me. This episode of Bluey is called Wild Girls. I still want to see how what Wild Girls is played, though. Oh. Are they, like, hunting? Away. Now we have nothing to eat. That's okay. We can dance for food. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, no, a harvest dance. <laughs> Which one's gonna get burned at the stake and sacrificed? We got food! Well done! Let's dance to celebrate! <laughs> I'm awful. I'm a horrible dancer. Mm. I'm also not a girl, so this would be a this would be a very bad game for me to play. Who's going to catch some breakfast? We will. Come on, well. Where's that blasted piggy at? Hi, Bluey. What are you playing? Farmers! How do you play farmers? It's easy. You plant seeds. You dance for food. See? These are potatoes. Whoa. Rusty and me. Oh, have potatoes and molasses. Oh, so much food. That's a good shot. Like. I love that super wide pickles. shot. Okay. Wait, what about Coco? I j I'm going to pause real quick just because that super wide shot reminds me of my favorite Wes Anderson film is. I don't know why this is popping in my head, but. I mean, I know why. I'll explain why here in a minute. But it's kind of random. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual episode. But uh, my favorite Wes Anderson movie is Moonrise Kingdom. And uh, I love the shot where, oh my gosh, Sam and Sam Shikovsky and what is the girl's name? Why am I blanking on the girl's name? I feel awful. She's like the main character of the movie. Anyway, when they first meet up with each other, they're like on opposite ends of a field. And it looked kind of like that shot a little bit. If we had like 
you know, two characters on either end of it. That's it, it just made me think of that shot. And now I really want to watch Moonrise Kingdom again. Like I said, nothing to do with the episode, but I really want I, I just wanted to throw that out there. It's a great movie. Uh, I kind of it's this episode so far is it, it's OK so far. It's one of those things like I can kind of see where the lesson's going to go. Uh, I, I'm assuming, what is it? Chloe? Uh, I'm so bad with the side characters names. Uh, I, I think I forgot to say, I did read the synopsis of this one at the beginning. I knew this was going to be a side character focused episode. So I am glad to see Bluey. And I know we've had a couple of these where Bluey just like didn't appear. Uh, so yeah, good to see a Bluey in your own show. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be that, uh, I think Chloe is the Dalmatian. I know Indy is her and i think coco's the the poodle so yeah i guess that would be chloe i don't know if it's going to be that chloe convinces them like hey sometimes we just need to play other games or realizes you know what wild girls is fine i don't know how it's going to go but it's probably going to go one of those two ways but we'll see there's still quite a bit of episode left coco you have to come with me there's a new game everyone's playing it's called farmers are they wild farmers but you said you'd play wild girls with mm. me Oh yeah. But people can change their minds Come though. On, go and catch some food. Okay. Uh see now Indy doesn't even want to play Wild Girls. Maybe Wild Girls can have farmers in it. Oh yeah. Coco! Rather than dancing for food, we can she harvest it. Wild Girls can have farmers in it. No, they're different games. Oh. Promise me you'll stay away from those farmers. Oh. They sound dangerous. Ooh, I don't like this. I was gonna say we know Coco's mom is really, she, really sweet. Hey, from a from baby race oh does she have to decide whether it's the scarecrow or the pig no because the pig is a scarecrow <gasps> now we have no food for the winter guess we'll die game over but calypso says games can change if they need to mm, well, yeah calypso is wrong <gasps> but calypso absolutely is not wrong. is indy gonna run away That little piano melody sounded a little Breath of the Wildy, a little bit. Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild Girls. Indy, Indy, shoo cross. Ah, uh, we got a farmer now. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Aw. It always makes me sad when they cry like that in this show. Oh, oh. There's got to be some solution to this, right? Oh, Calypso. Calypso. You came out of nowhere. Can you play with me? And what do you love about playing wild girls? And I love dancing with Indy. You can do all that in Farmers, Just right? Like playing with Indy. Aww. Do you think you could scare a scarecrow? Oh, is she going to be a crow? <laughs> that shot's incredible, actually. The little musical drop, too. Games change. Oh no, look! This corn is shriveled up! No, Indy, it's too dangerous! Don't worry. I used to be a wild girl. Aww. <laughs> well, mother, I'm back! Daughter! I brought you food! Oh, so she's still playing oh, both. Think you're the pink witch of the woods? Well, maybe I am. Yeah. <laughs> Games change. Games can change. There we go. Aww. Do you want a quick dance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was cute at the end. Overall, not my favorite episode of Bluey, I would say. Uh, I'm trying to trying to focus on what I would even say the lesson really was. Like, yes, there was a little bit of what I was saying earlier about the, you know, games change, let people play whatever they want, kind of sort of speak. But it was also just kind of like. Uh, I guess Coco realizing she just really likes to play with Indy, but then Indy was kind of still playing both games. I don't know. It was a little bit muddled in there. Uh, it was, you know, it was, it was just a, a fine episode. Nothing too crazy. Uh, it wasn't super funny. Uh, I don't know. It was, you know, to be, to be quite honest, that was one of the lower tier episodes of Bluey for me. I didn't, it didn't really make me feel too much. And, uh, you know, you kind of you kind of hate to see it sometimes, but you know, not every episode can be army if I can find it. 
Okay, I found it. <laughs> it took me way too long to find ARMY. I definitely skipped past it at first when I was just looking through the Season 2 stuff. Uh, but this is, like I said, this is the one that won the poll on my community page. So, hey, like I said, be on the lookout for those whenever I'm going to be filming another Bluey, uh, Bluey video where I revisit one. I'm going to put a poll out there to have you vote on which one it is. Uh, ARMY Far and Away won, uh, which I'm happy for, even though someday, someday we're going to watch Calypso. At least we got a little Calypso in the last episode, but man. And someday I just really want to watch that one in a video like I just think that's such a sweet episode and I love it so do me a favor and next time you see a poll vote for Calypso please uh but army uh this is an episode I've seen a couple times I think I'm in danger of crying in this one uh I, I'll, I'll explain why as the episode goes on uh but I just think this is a really sweet lovely episode and I'm really excited to watch it and talk about it with all of you uh unlike you know when you watch when you watch an episode blind sometimes it just doesn't really do much for you kind of like wild girls did you know army army is going to make us feel something here so I'm, I'm really excited to watch this so let's hop into it is season two episode 13 army starting up in three two one go mom hey jack oh. mm -hmm. how was your first day at your new school good oh i forgot that was his, literally his first day and I couldn't sit still, as usual. Yeah. Come on, Jack. Can you sit still, mate? Yes, Dad. Did you remember your hat? Um, my hat. Where's my hat? Ooh, look. I already hat. have things to say. Jack, your hat? I forgot it. Ah, oh, Jack. What are we going to do with you, mate? Dad, Jack, still not sitting still. I'm going to wait until this scene's over Jack. to kind of get into Sorry, it. I forgot. Why can't you do with your toes? I don't know. Okay. I'm going to pause it right here already, just barely into this episode, uh, because I said I'd get into it, but uh, just right there, I just want to talk about the, the difference between the bat, the dad and the little sibling. Uh, the dad, you know, he did tell his kid to sit still, which, you know, if you're if your kid's you know, doing something kind of distracting or something you just genuinely just don't really want them to do. You know, it's fine to ask them to not not do something like like, you know, my kid screamed in the car today for no reason. And he said, hey, can we use our can we not scream in the car? That hurts mommy and daddy's ears. Uh, and then, you know, the the little sibling, of course, is saying, like, why can't you just do as you're told? The father, at least here, is is displaying a lot more like tact kind of like I know, like, Sometimes if your kid's doing something for the millionth time and you keep telling them not to do it, it can be frustrating, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, good on the dad for still just saying like, hey, could you sit still, buddy? Uh, just, you know, that's a, a fairly reasonable request. Uh, but I do want to, what kind of colors my uh, interpretation of this one is my child has not been diagnosed with ADHD, but uh, has been diagnosed as autistic uh, on the, the ASD spectrum uh he it's a very mild case he's uh they're saying he's he's gonna have a very successful life probably most likely uh it's a very very mild diagnosis uh but uh, uh from what we've heard uh autism and adhd often go hand in hand with each other and we've noticed a lot of kind of hyperactive t uh, tendencies from him and so this episode kind of like I said, even though we don't have the official diagnosis, uh, we're pretty sure that it will come someday. So watching this episode, I can't help but see my own kid a little bit in Jack. So that's kind of I'm already just thinking about it. It's like getting me a little choked up. But uh, that's just to let you know my perspective watching this episode. That's kind of what I think about when I watch it. So let's carry on. Get ready to watch me cry again. Then we got to school and I met my teacher Calypso. Well, hello! You must be We stand Calypso 2 here on this channel. I'm Jack. Jack can't sit still or remember anything. And there we go, the little sibling being like... I think you should go and play with that red kelpie down there. Okay, oh. bye, Dad. And she immediately knows, like, who to partner yeah, him I with. Rusty? Can I be in the army? Well, maybe. Can you do as you're told? No. Yeah. I'm not good at doing what... Attention! <laughs> I do like that. So also just to pause once again right here. I love that, you know, I guess Jack, you know, sometimes you don't always want to listen to your parent, but you'll listen to somebody else. Right. And he keeps hearing that from his younger, younger sibling. You can't sit still. It can't do as you're told. I also love how realistic it is. Uh, when I was a kid and my mom turned 40, apparently I went around telling everybody my mom is 40. 
Uh, and so I thought it was the funniest thing. So I totally get it that the little siblings like he can't sit still and do as he's told. He can't listen to anything, which, you know, that we see that it affects Jack. He went at like Rusty said, can you do as you're told? And Jack's like, well, no, not really, because that's what he hears from his little little brother. I think it's a little brother all the time. Uh, but then Rusty, you know, good old Rusty, you know, Rusty, Rusty might be the best character in the show, actually. I know it's just recency bias from watching Cricket last time and watching this one today. God, Rusty's just such a good kid. And uh, he he didn't wait for Jack to give any of his excuses or anything. He just immediately said, attention, and, and got going playing. Like, I don't want to listen to this. I'm going to make a man out of this kid. And I kind of love that. On the right, Max. Hop, 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 oh, silly. <laughs> See, he can do as he's told. And I love that in Cricket, we actually see Rusty's dad, which I did not know was voiced by one of the Wiggles. Thank you all for telling me that in the comments. But from now on, keep track of your equipment. Yes, Sergeant. Pop! Pop! <laughs> Rusty took me into the bush to learn all the army stuff. And to compare to another episode. Just like last time when I was talking about Moonrise Kingdom, this one makes me think of Forrest Gump when they're in Vietnam. It's just a wild girl. I love that. In the in the score back there. Okay, that hill is called Hill 4. That one is called Hill 6. That blue gun is called Tango 7. Let me see if I can remember these. I never can remember for later. I'm not good remembering numbers or words. Well, you better get good if you want to be in the army recruit, Russell. You need to know these things if we call for a dust off. A dust off? A dust off is when you call in a helicopter to come and rescue you. You have to tell the chopper. I gotta say, like, I, I've never super paid attention to the uh, the score of this episode, but I kind of really love it. We never get a lot of vocalizations in there, but like I, I said, I mentioned the, the kind of in, the, in the, the background and then the whistling as well. You know, the music in the show is, is phenomenal, but like I just said, we don't often get this type of stuff. Vocalizations, like music made from people basically from people's voices yeah we've had singing in a couple episodes and and all that kind of stuff but like this is so wholly different and i i'm just noticing it for the first time i guess that's what happens when you you know are sitting here watching with headphones on by yourself as opposed to sitting on the couch eating cereal next to your kid right I gotta, man mm, it's just adding to an already great episode and i love like the cutaways for jack to explain what everything is like it's almost like you know the episode started with him telling his mom about how his day was and it's almost like he's telling the story and then says like oh yeah by the way mom a dust off is when we call for a helicopter to come and i love that it's you know he mentioned at the beginning like i can't pay attention i can't follow orders but these cutaways show that he's actually learning and paying attention and can repeat the information that he's taken in rusty being the best character but the funnest bit was the sentry duty. It's when you were guard. You have to be on the lookout when the other soldiers sleep. And I love that the kid with ADHD loves the sitting still part of the of army. I was really good at sentry. You're really good at it. And that he's really good at it too. Sarge. He said when he comes back, he's gonna bring me some condensed milk. Ah, oh, I love condensed milk. Can't you just buy condensed milk That's at the store though? I'm having fun with this one. Also, just real quick, the shot, I need to go back here. I or I could I can just put it in, in editing right here. This shot, you can see it a little bit, like the grass, which is normally like straight, kind of has a curve to it. It was especially evident when it was showing both Jack and Rusty. Uh, the animation is emulating a wide angle lens to kind of show uh, kind of a wider depth of field than what you're seeing. Because like if, if a normal shot could show like this much, I'm trying to straighten my hands a little bit for the camera. If a normal shot can show like this much, a wide angle lens could maybe show this much but it kind of distorts around the sides so 
you can notice it in a film when like a, a door that's normally or something that's normally straight kind of has a bit of a curve, bit of an angle to it. That's just as for the most part, if the film if the filmmaking is done correctly, it's a stylistic choice to show kind of like, you know, close up in on something, but still able to show kind of a wide area. And I kind of love this. They said this is the scariest part. There's something unknown in the grass. And so we're super close in with a wide angle shot. And I kind of love that, like, the animators can, like, still manage to do filmmaking techniques like this that, you know, a child might not understand. A lot of adults might not understand even. But I saw it. I clocked it. I noticed it. I forget what's in the grass, but um, it's, you know, I, I forget if it's nothing scary if it's something that they run away from and call for a dust off. Let's find out. Contact! Oh. What do we do? It's Fall a bird. Back! All right, this is where they ask. Are they at Tango 7? Watch our location. It was all down to me. Did I, I get it right? I remember what that tree was called. Tango 7? Tango 5. No, Tango 6. Tango 7! I got it! Next to Tango 7. Over. Great work, recruit Russell. See, he remembered. And the positive reinforcement from Dusty or from Rusty as well. I got Rusty confused with dust off for a second there. Yeah. And I love that too. I love when the breeds they are like comes into the, the show. Pomeranians are a small but hardy breed. Jack Russell's love to run. Rusty like calling for dust offs. The view is amazing, right? I can't sit still, and I can't remember anything. That makes me so sad to hear the kid putting himself down like that. I'm not actually, I'm not really full on crying yet, but that d that does make me tear up a little. It's just sad. Oh, hi. I just barely saw Bluey again. So you're all safe. Good boy, Rusty. Congratulations, recruit Russell. You're now Private Russell. I was in the army. See you tomorrow, Rusty. I forget. It's not this episode, yeah, right? Yeah. Wow, that was a lot of detail. <laughs> yeah. Good boy, Jack. Like I said, it was just him oh, telling his mom about like the whole time, right? Milk now? Where'd you get condensed milk from? Rusty gave it to me. See you, Jack. Hey, Rusty. Oh, I forgot we actually heard his dad in this one. Okay. I, I didn't remember that we actually heard Rusty's dad in this one. I thought it was just we saw him. But he actually had a line there. Uh, the point I was going to make that I didn't finish saying is that uh, about the dog breeds and how they come in. Uh, from a couple Bluey videos ago when I watched Turtle Boy, uh, the deaf child, uh, what I, I somebody told me in the comments is that that breed of dog that that is is a breed that's known for having hearing problems. So once again, it's another instance of the show really playing into dogs and what they're kind of known for and what their their breeds kind of do or certain qualities about the breeds and i just i just love when they incorporate that kind of stuff into the show yes these animals are like humanoid kind of anthropomorphized animals but they still have you know we saw in wild girls they cry by going oh by like howling kind of uh, they wag their tails when they get excited and uh you know their breeds actually carry into some of the things they do and the their traits right and i think that's super super neat i love that a lot but man army's just like a feel-good episode man i just i love that one uh it didn't destroy me as emotionally as i thought it was uh, just because you know like i said it kind of reminds me of my kid a little bit um yeah it's just a good solid episode man uh but stick bird we are about to watch stick bird which it looks like they're at the beach for this one and that's what i, th I think i've seen with some of the Posts. I follow the official Bluey account on Instagram, and I see they, they've made a couple posts about it. I'm in like a Bluey memes group, and I've seen a lot of discussion about stick birds. So I'm just real excited to get into this one, folks. Um, yeah, I don't know what awaits me, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for this one. This feels like 
when I when I pick the ones, I try to pick ones to to stick at the end that I think are going to be like the the big ones of the video, right? Because yeah, Army's a great episode, but I've seen it already. Wild Girls, you know, I put it first because I'm pretty sure I saw another post in that same Bluey memes group that said, uh, "Does does anyone else just not like Wild Girls very much?" I was like, "Oof, I got to pair that one with a good one." So. Here's hoping Stickbird is great. I'm sure it will be. Uh, but season three, episode 41, Stickbird, starting up in three, two, one, go. This episode of Blue oh, wow. Stickbird. Straight into it. Uh, is that the first time they've ever done that? I want to watch The Beach sometime, too. That's like for a rewatch. That's, that's another really fun episode. I like it a lot. Oh. Is that an actual crab claw, or is that just a toy? Also, I just love that they've forgotten about Bandit. Also, good to see the full family here. <laughs> yep, that's accurate. Oh, sorry, what? Nothing. That's... Come on, kids. I'll teach you how to throw. That's interesting. This is the target. Now stand side on like you're on a skate. Can Bandit not throw either? Also, my kid is horrible at throwing things. Lean on your back foot. Then you're gonna swoop. Use your whole body. Hey, chili mist. Yeah. Why do we have to learn to throw properly? So you can throw things really far. <laughs> Just not in the house, please, for the love of God. I need better sticks. Ooh, I bet there's some over there. Can I go look? Yeah, you go. <laughs> is Bandit just... Yeah, race me to that stick. I was just going to say, is he just going to be a character PNG, just like... Let it go, babe. You're missing all this. Let it go? You want to race, do you? Yeah, race it, go. Hey, what? <laughs> I was going to say, he's be busy being a beautiful mermaid. Oh, bingo. You're too quick for me. Oh, Dad, look. It looks like a bird's head. It looks more like a pterodactyl to me. Can we make a stick bird? Yeah, right, eh? Hopefully that looks like it's snapped Bandit out of his funk a little bit. That's just kind of weird. Oh, maybe that's what the lesson's gonna be in this one. When you're doing things, you can't focus on being sad. Unless the thing you're doing is making you sad, like when I finished Owl House last week. Be happy here. You've got lots of other birds oh no, he's pensively looking away. Dad. Dad. Let's try over there. Ready, set, go! <laughs> okay, there we go. Whoa, look at all these sticks. Also, my kid loves to race me. I'm gonna I'm gonna just pause right here just because of the race and everything. Uh, my kid's at the age where he, you know, he's potty trained, but he's still. Does. I'm just talking so much trash about my kid. I'm so sorry if you're ever watching this years down the line, buddy. But uh, he's at the age where he's fully potty trained, but doesn't always want to cooperate with, you know, getting up to go potty. If he's like watching TV or if he's playing with his monster trucks or something like that, it's like, hey, buddy, let's. Let's let's get up and go potty. He'll be like, I don't want to go potty. It's like, but you haven't gone potty in quite a while. I don't want you to have an accident. The surefire way to get him to go do anything, to brush his teeth, to go potty, to you know, any, change from his pajamas to his day clothes, anything that anything that he might not just want to initially do, say, bet you can't beat me to the bathroom, immediately he'll just start running. And then, of course, you let him win, and he says, I beat you. And it's like, oh, good. Now that you're here, go potty. Uh, so it's, hey, a race, if you, if you have a small child, a race is sometimes the best motivation you can ever give them to do anything. And plus then you don't have to give them a snack. You don't have to bribe them with anything. You just say like, race me. Good parenting strap from parenting strap from Tom and guaranteed to work. TM asterisk might not actually work, but give it a try anyway. Oh, more kids race. No, not the stick bird. I'm gonna win. Come on, Cookie. Cookie? No. Oh, no. Oh, Bingo. I was gonna say, is now is Bingo just gonna, like, freeze up like Bandit did? They broke stick bird. I know. Decapitated. Why would they do that? Mm. When you put something beautiful out into the world, it's no longer yours, really. Oh, so close. Is that meta from the, the creators of the show? When you put something beautiful out into the world, it's not yours anymore? You got 
Bluey is ours now. Come on, cheer up, Bingo. You're missing all this. That is a beautiful hey, beach Dad, scene. I can throw. Uh, Bingo's a bit upset at the moment. Mm. I'm upset and angry. Oh. Some kids ruined a stick bird. Oh, I can show you a trick my buddy Mia taught me if you like. It's for after you're upset and angry. Yes, is this going to make me cry? All the upset and all the angry. There's usually it's something in my heart. In your belly or your neck. And always remember Ooh, and your shoulders and your lower back. Yep, yep. I feel that. Got all that upset and angry in your hand. What do I do with it? Do you want to keep it? No, I don't want it. Well, yeah. what do you do with something you don't want Good progress from Bingo, not wanting to be in her bad mood, right? Oh, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I think Bandit needs to do this, too. You throw it away. Oh. Uh-uh, like Mum said. You need to throw this thing really far. Oh, yeah. Stand sideways. Yep. Like on a Ready up. Bend your knees. Point. Yep. Get comfy. And... Yeah. It's going all the way out to sea. Look for the splash. Look for the splash. There. Did you see it? Yes. Psh. It was a brilliant mile It did it. Away. Good. So how do you feel? Good. Oh Yay. yeah. Thanks, Bluey. Yeah, That's thanks, good. Thanks, Bluey. Thanks, Mia. She taught me it. Oh, and Mom couldn't decide Oh, is Mia the, the girl from Barky Boats? I'll give you a head start. Okay, where does it go? Always got to give the kids a head start. Because I'm fast. Is he going to do it too? Feel where it's at? Yeah. Oh, look at that shot. And the splash. Oh, that was cute. I loved that. He just needed a moment. Um, yeah, that was that was wholesome. I liked that one. It wasn't emotionally destructive like I was, you know, kind of expecting it to be, maybe potentially. Uh, but it was just really sweet. And you know, like like I said, uh, or I don't know if I said or not. Uh, it's similar to I mentioned bad mood, right? Where that episode Bingo is mad upset about something and she you know, was playing bad mood with bandit and she didn't want to let go of her bad mood because she was having fun being in her bad mood and ruining everyone else's day and all their stuff right uh but it's also similar to copycat i want to say which why are the why are the kids going through trauma and bad feelings episodes always about birds right uh copycat and i want to compare it also to copycat just because uh, it started off as something just completely different. Let's make a stick bird on the beach. That's fun, right? Just like copycat. Let's play copycat. I'm copying everything you're doing. Oh, we're playing a game. Is the lesson here to that you're gonna, you know, learn not to be annoying or what's, you know, what's the lesson here? And then all of a sudden, hard left turn, they find the, the baby bird uh, in copycat that's, that's, you know, not doing too well and ends up dying. Uh, at least that's that's how I think copycat started that they were kind of copying each other and then I think it ended with wanting to reenact uh, the bird and finding the bird and the bird dying and everything whereas this one you know they're making making the stick bird on the beach and some other kid comes and takes the head away and now it becomes an episode about I'm feeling bad I just went through something that made me sad and upset how do I deal with it and well not as like traumatizing or confusing because to a child we found a bird that was hurt and it died. That can be a little hard for them to wrap their heads around, right? Uh, it's it's so super specific, right? And that's something that's equally as, as confusing, like I said. Whereas stick bird, somebody took away something that I worked on and that made me happy and they just took it away not knowing what it was, right? So that's a lot more relatable, I think, though not as, not as confusing, not as like traumatic. But at the same time, it's also like a, uh, how am I trying to word this? It's a good way for kids to kind of like learn how to deal with those kinds of emotions, right? Because, you know, at the end of the day, this is a show for children, you know, for parents as well, but also like aimed at children to teach them lessons and learn how to do things. And I think that's really, really nice. It's something that kids can emulate and do on their own to think even to parents, you know, you say like, let's take a deep breath and count to five. You know, we see these all the time in shows, and now there's a brand new one. Find where the hurt, the anger, and the upset is. Gather it all up. Shake it out of your head if you need to. Bundle it all up. 
point and throw it away right uh that's you know that's that's a really good way something that kids can act out and do that's i love that that was good that was a really good episode that was a great way to end this this session i think uh i don't think i have too much else to say just you know all the episodes where they go to the beach are good ones uh i think there's only two that one and the beach uh, I like both of those a lot. So what did you think of this set today? Or, do you agree with me that uh, Wild Girls was a bit of a weak one? What do you think of ARMY? Did you enjoy Stickbird as much as I did? Let me know all those things and more in the comments. Like I said, we got the 28-minute 28, 28 episode long Bluey coming up sometime next month. So I'm excited to watch that. So come back for that. Uh, should be starting up Infinity Train and Hilda soon. So check back for that as well if that sounds interesting to you. But until then, whatever video you watch of mine next, I'll see you later, and I'll catch you next time. Take it easy, everybody.